morning, friends and family uh, of the Life Center Church and beyond. It's Sunday morning again. So we want to welcome you all to our online experience. So let's start our online experience today with a song of praise. And as we've done before, it's a call and response. So whatever I say, you just repeat it after me as well, too. Go ahead and let's begin to worship the Lord Most High this morning. Amen. A lot of you all already know the song. It's a fan favorite in our church. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready to praise the Lord this morning. I don't know about you. Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You reign over all the land. Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. Lion of Judah, reign over everything. 
your pens and your notepads ready and let's dive into the word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Life Center Church's live broadcast. You want to go ahead and welcome everyone officially? Yes. So if this is your very first time visiting with us uh, at our online worship experience, we want you to pop on over to the lifecenterchurch.org. Click on I'm new. There's a connection card at the end of that. You got to keep scrolling all the way up, though, and fill out that card to let us know that this is your first time visiting with us today. We want to send you something to say thank you for choosing us to worship with this morning. Nowadays, you have thousands of options to choose from and where you worship on a Sunday morning. And we are so honored that you chose us at least to spend the next 30 minutes with. So with that said, go ahead and grab your cell phone or grab your iPad or your Android. Go ahead and grab a pencil or a pen. Well, that may be a little antiquated. Yeah. So go ahead and take some <laughs> notes off your cell phone. Oh, your iPad or your cell phone <laughs> or something. And let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get into the word this morning. Father, what an honor and a privilege it is that we can come before the throne of grace. We thank you that we know that you are the God of all grace. So we thank you for your word today, that your word is a lamp into our feet, that your word is a light into our pathway. We thank you for giving us inside information, Father, so that we can walk in victory in every area of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, why don't you open up to Psalm number 91. Mm -hmm. And on last week, we started a new series entitled Faith versus fear. Mm -hmm. This chapter is really about the promises of God. Um, and I think it's important that, especially during the time that we're in right now, we, we need to constantly remind ourselves that although there's much danger, there's much uncertainty in, in, in the world, God didn't tell us that we wouldn't experience danger or persecution or trials or temptations for even that much. In fact, he said those who live godly will experience persecution. Mm -hmm. What he did promise us is in the midst of all of the trials or tribulations or issues or just flat out drama, he's always provided a way to escape. Mm -hmm. And the way that he provided for us to escape it's through the word. And so as we go through Psalm number 91, I want us to always remember that God's way is the best way. God's way is a higher way, especially higher than what we may have thought in our mind. What, what, what you laughing at? I don't know she... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's different when you're having this online experience though, because we're looking at you, we're looking at Pastor, we're looking at you, so that's why I start laughing. Hey, but this is how it rolls, all right? <laughs> all right, so Psalm number 91, uh, but I want to say that there is a key to walking in this divine protection. And, right. and that is in stanza number one. So it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High mm -hmm. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So here is the key to experiencing God's protection. It's where we dwell at. And just in review, this word dwell means to sit. It means to remain. It's actually a permanent place. It's a place that we're supposed to live at. It's not a place where we're supposed to visit at, but it's a place that we are constantly supposed to be at Monday through Friday, 365 days out of the year. It's a place where we remain. It's a place that when we dwell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just kind of wanted to, to jump in really quickly here because um, yeah, we went a little bit deep into uh, dwelling on last week. So pop on and take a look at that message from last week. But uh, when you look at uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place, Place yeah. of the Most High. Uh, I love the Message Bible's uh, interpretation of Psalm 91. Uh, it says, "You who sit down in God's high, in, in the high God's presence, mm -hmm. spend the night." in Shaddai's or El Shaddai's shadow. And so this scripture, we talked about it last week, or at least I brought it up uh, on Matthew chapter six, verse six. It says, but when you pray, go into your most private room. And this is the amplified versions uh, of secret place. Go into your most private room and close the door. Mm -hmm. Pray to the Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. There's a reason why he said, when you're going to spend some time with me, go to the most private room and then shut the door behind you and get away from the noise. I was watching something on uh, TV this week, and Pastor's like, you always watch something on TV. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching something on TV this week and there was a woman, she was actually experiencing a, a severely troubled time. So she texted, no, she called her friend 
And she said, hey, you know, can you talk? But her friend texts back and said, uh, I'm sorry, I see you calling. I can't talk right now. I'm in a room full of people and there's a lot of noise. And it made me think about how many times I was actually in a room full of people. And I did receive a phone call and I picked it up and I said, hang on a second. In order for me to hear you clearly, I need to go in another room and get away from the noise. So that's what he means when he says, go into your secret place so that you you can actually block out and get away from the noise so that you can hear clearly what the Father has to say to you. Well, that's a perfect lead into stanza number two, uh, because when you go into that, that secret place and you can hear, there's a conversation that's taking place. Mm -hmm. So it's a conversation between that person and God. And when you're in that conversation between you and God, then there are, I won't say secrets, but there is information mm -hmm. that will take place that could really catapult you to a place of not only safety, but wisdom, of peace, of joy. But it's when you get away that you can be in that secret place one-on-one -on -one with him. Mm -hmm. So stanza number two says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, notice, and him Will I trust? Now, we talked about this a little bit on last week, so keep a marker here and go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Because Psalm number 91, stanza number 2, it, it says a key phrase. It says, I will say of the Lord. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse number 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and that of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And so notice from what... Paul wrote to Timothy, and we know that Timothy at the time was the pastor of the church at Ephesus, and his church was almost 100,000 people, and we get so concerned with big churches. Uh, <laughs> this is not anything new. We no. just go back to the Word. It's all written in the Word. Mm -hmm. And so Paul wrote to him because he was concerned about what people would think about him because he was so young, and then he gives them some inside information on what we call revelation, and he says, God has not given you the spirit a fear. Mm -hmm. So notice that fear is not a person. Fear is not a thing, but fear is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And notice what fear's responsibility or assignment is. Its responsibility is to get us to try to respond through our emotions. Uh, yeah. Well, those emotions could be worry. It could be stress. It could be uncertainty. It could be anxiety. And from those emotions, it's looking for some type of uh, verbal response. Mm -hmm. And when there's a verbal response to that uncertainty or to that spirit of fear, then the ultimate goal of fear or the spirit of fear is to get us to a place where we live a life of torment, mm. a place where we are um, destroy or what people are experiencing right now is being unstable mm -hmm. and it comes because the spirit of fear is actually in the atmosphere you know it's it's actually making me what pastor's talking about think about the story of David and Goliath and most people have heard this story a lot of times you heard it in children's church little Davy you know came up against the big old giant Goliath <laughs> little Davy had the five smooth stones and he hit the slingshot and hit him right in the middle of the eye but <laughs> I don't know if some people have actually sat down and dissected the scripture to see exactly what was going on. Uh, when you think about uh, Goliath at times, Goliath was big. Right. Um, for some people, you might say this whole thing that's happening as a result of COVID-19, it's, it's something big that I'm dealing with. Goliath was actually taunting mm -hmm. the Israelites for 40 days. And he was taunting them and got them to the place so much so that they already felt like that they were defeated because he was insulting them. Yep taunting them and harassing them. Doesn't that sound like the spirit of fear that would constantly come to harass you every day? Like when I do, when we do come out of this COVID-19 situation, you even going to have money in your 401k to live. You're going to have money to retire. Do you have a job even? He was taunting and harassing them, yep. trying to stop them from moving forward. And so basically I read a, a really cool definition of what the spirit of fear is. And I want to read it to you all. It says fear is basically the belief that something is out there that is going to get you and you can't stop it. Mm. Fear is basically the belief 
that something is out there that's going to happen to you or going to get you and you can't stop it. The victory was already won. And I want to submit to you all today that even with David and Goliath, the victory came in a way in which nobody thought that it could. You know, you thought you think about like how how come Saul didn't go because he was big and he had all this armor. You sent out this little ruddy boy with some stones and a slingshot. And that's how they defeated it, de defeated their giant. So I want to at least present the opportunity for you all to understand and say, you know what? Maybe if I just simply trust it or place my trust in God, I don't have to figure out all the details and how this victory is going to happen, how all the pieces are going to line up for me. All I have to do is just trust God. And I know sometimes that might be a, a cliche for people. You know, if you just trust God, everything is going to be all right. No. It's true if you do place your trust in him. But there's the key word. If I place my trust in God, I want to show you something quickly. Well, well before you're doing that, okay. uh, it just made me kind of think about. What did it make you think about? David. What did you think before about Before David? David faced Goliath, David was put in remembrance about the past victories mm -hmm. that he had with God. Mm -hmm. Remember, before Goliath came on the scene, David had already defeated a bear. Mm -hmm. David had already defeated a lion. And so God had already delivered him from things in the past. And then before he even went to Goliath, David said out of his mouth. That's right. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He, in other words, he said, he this man, yeah, this man doesn't even have a covenant. Here I am. Mm -hmm. I have a covenant with God. So David put himself in remembrance about the covenant that God established with him. And David said out of his mouth, mm -hmm. again, it goes back to Psalm number 91, stanza number two, I will say. say. So yeah. David said, even before he went to Goliath, I'm going to defeat him. Yeah. Almost as if like his slingshot, like was it like, like the slingshot was his words. Does that make sense to you all? So like when you speak to your giant, it's almost as if like David's slingshot is actually going into the atmosphere to attack your giant. Uh, I just did something recently. Uh, yeah, uh, was it this past Thursday? This past Thursday, I did something with the ladies and we did a movie review on uh, the pursuit of happiness. And I'm kicking myself, ladies, I did not record it. But there was a part in that movie where they were at the shelter and they were singing a song. And, it, and the song went, Lord, don't move that mountain. Give me the strength to climb it. <laughs> Like what in the world when Mark eleven twenty three says to speak to your mountain yeah. and it shall be removed. Let's that that scripture is worth us reading. Turn to Mark eleven twenty three 23 really quickly. And it says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall just say. You have to run at your giants with your mouth open. I think Mark Hankins said that. You have to speak to the mountain. It says, for verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, I'm urgently requiring you to take a look at this, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he said shall come to pass, he will have Whatever, Whatever it is that he says. Yeah, that's right. You got to speak to that giant. You have to speak to your fear. Just like Pastor was saying, David was like, who is this uncircumcised philicide that dare defy the armies of the living God? What? You think you're going to take the money out of my bank account? Okay, I'm way off here now. So, so if that's <laughs> the case, let's take a moment to act on this. So what we've been hearing is fear, 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 fear. CNBC, ABC, Channel 7, 2, 4, 6, 8. You may even feel fearful. Mm -hmm. And so if the Bible says from Mark 11, 22 and 23 and 24, and then we look at Psalm number 91, stanza number 2, it's constantly telling us to I will save the Lord or I will speak. Why don't you take a moment and repeat this after me? Say fear. Fear. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. You have to go. You have to go. Right now. Right now. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say that again. Fear. Fear. Get out of my house. Get out. You have to go. You got to go. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, wasn't that so easy? Now, believe it in your heart. That's the key sometimes. I think that it is that 
we don't believe it. You know, um, as we were talking about where you place your trust, uh, I'm reminded of many times where I actually experienced fear uh, in our life, in our marriage, you know, all these moves that we've actually been on. And uh, many times I would have to sit down and talk to myself and try to trace back. I would say, Adrian, like, okay, why, why am I afraid right now? Like, where did this come from? What was the source of it? And nine times out of well, 10. Well, well, we know the source. So where did you open up the door mm -hmm. to fear it? Yeah, I mean, source, like, was it a financial source right. or, yeah, but that definitely opening up the door. And every, almost every time I realized it's where I had placed my trust. Yeah. So you've got maybe your, your finances right here. And I started realizing I was placing my trust in Adrian's ability, mm -hmm. Adrian's intellect, Adrian's uh, ability, her, mm -hmm. Adrian's degree. Mm -hmm. And so I had put all my trust here, but then here's God. Right. I hadn't put any trust in that particular situation in the father. Look at how limited Adrian's scope is. Look at the look at Adrian's capacity compared to the father's capacity, but I had put all of my trust in what I was able to accomplish on my own instead of putting my trust in the father. And when I recognized it, and obviously with the help of my husband, because he always <laughs> helps me recognize it. What, when I recognized it, I had to shift my dish and take what I had placed my trust in and begin to place my confidence and trust in the word and that God had already secured the victory for me and place my confidence and trust in the word that guess what? He's smarter and he's bigger than I am and he knows more than I am. When that happens, something on the inside was different because my perception was different about the situation because I allowed my trust and expectation in the father to drive my decisions from that point. Well, you had, and what you developed is more faith than right. you did in fear. Mm -hmm. And so even where that example was concerned, mm -hmm. you developed more confidence in God's ability to take care of you and God's ability to give you the wisdom that you need mm -hmm. and God's ability to provide the security than your own ability mm -hmm. or your own wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to all get to the place where we have more confidence in God and less confidence in ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's almost looks like with, with David and Goliath, everybody could have looked at Goliath and was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Like he's big, like he's huge, but it actually starts with believing that even though the giant might be big, it's not bigger than Jesus. Well, that's the trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, he tries to get us again to believe. Mm -hmm. So what everything is about this, our whole Christianity, mm -hmm. it's all about what do you believe? Mm -hmm. And so the enemy is trying to taint our belief system, mm -hmm. but God is trying to fill us up with more of him. Mm -hmm. And if we get to the place and we get to the understanding that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, I'm bigger than, I'm stronger than, I'm wiser than anything that's happening in the world. Why? Because the greater one lives on the inside of me. And we've got to constantly renew our minds with the fact that God is bigger. Mm -hmm. God is stronger. God is wiser. God is smarter. God is, has more resources available for me. When we get to the place where we're constantly renewing our mind with that, then we won't give in and we won't yield to the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, in 1 Peter chapter 5, um, verse 8, I'm going to read from the NIV version of the Bible. It says to be alert mm -hmm. and sober-minded. Yep. Your enemy, so you have an enemy, and then it tells you who the enemy is. The devil. Mm -hmm. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But then a lot of times we kind of camp out on that scripture, and he sees somebody who he can devour. But let's read one verse further. Right. To verse 9, it says, he, the Lord tells us exactly what to do yeah. in a situation like this. Resist him. And then it tells you how. Standing firm in the faith. Yeah. So that's how I resist the enemy. By standing firm firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. I love the word of God because it tell, it gives you, okay, this is what you're going through, but look, here's the solution. Resist the enemy 
by standing firm in the faith. So faith versus fear. So <laughs> so if we don't stand firm in the faith, mm -hmm. then the enemy would try to convince us that you are the only person. Oh my goodness! In the world. <laughs> That's dealing with that situation. Who hasn't felt that way? <laughs> like nobody else in the whole world mm -hmm. has dealt with your situation or your circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, and trust me, we're not making light of that. No. But it is the enemy's job to try to convince you mm -hmm. to get you to believe that you are the only person in the world that has kids <laughs> at home that's doing online learning <laughs> and you're ready for your kids to go back to school. Exactly. The enemy tries to get you to the place where you just believe that you are the only parent that's frustrated. You know, and that's it. <laughs> you see what we're going through. There, that's right. <laughs> but you know, the enemy also uses that as a tool to back you down. That's right. Now, there was a medical write up from the Neuroscience Educational Institute. And I'm going to read it to you. And they basically said that fear arises when your sensory system. So what is your sensory? Your sight, touch, taste, all of that. Yep. When your sensory systems in the brain have determined that an external stimulus poses a threat. Mm. And then this is what happens. Um, and it could be fear of, you know what? People have fear of missing out. Yeah. Fear of missing out, fear of not having enough, fear that you're not enough, fear of failing, yep. fear of not having enough money. Uh, and so what happens is that in the body, it sets off three things. And this was in a, a neuroscience um, write-up. So it sets off three things, alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. So the first one it sets off is alarm. So when, it, when alarm sets off, it releases the stress hormone. So you're automatically just stressed out. Then the next stage it goes to is it releases re resistance. So that's when the stress hormone has begun to return back to normal. Mm -hmm. But what happened is your defenses are actually reduced. Then it carries you right on to the last stage, which is exhaustion. And that is when the body's ability to resist is just completely lost. Right. Commonly known as burnout, fatigue, and overloaded. It's almost as if the spirit of fear is trying to back you down. Right. It's trying to, to test your boundaries, to see if you're able to stand, to test your boundaries, to see how far they can, how far it can push you and how far it can wear you down and wear you down to the point where your defenses are so low that you don't even have strength enough to fight. That's why we do really have to be mindful of how much we do intake mm -hmm. in regards to the news media concerning this pandemic, because at the end of the day, it's almost as if it's like backing up against backing us up against a wall trying to wear us down that we start speaking uh, words of faith in the pandemic more than we're speaking words of faith in the living word of God to bring us out better than how we went in so instead of us hearing so much and listening so much to COVID-19 and its effect I think we've got to hear more about Psalm 91 right. you, mm -hmm. you see how I reverse that yeah uh COVID-19, Psalm number 91. I think they picked that up at yeah, the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> with all that said, that's why it's vitally important where we sleep at. Where we, because you read that from the Amplified. The, me no, which the one? message. Which one? Uh, Psalm number 91. Yes, the message. <laughs> so it's important where we abide at. Mm -hmm. Because when we learn how to abide under the secret place of the Almighty God, then we go back to stanza number two. I know we've been all over the place. It's good though. But this is how you <laughs> dissect verses right. verse by verse to mm -hmm. get more out of it. So when you go back to stanza number two, you will find that when you abide here, four things that God will actually do while we abide there. Mm -hmm. The first thing, because uh, the first part we said, I will say of the Lord. So I want you to repeat this after me. Say, I will say... I will say God is God is my refuge, my refuge. And really quickly, even in the message version of the Bible, verse two, it says, say this. Yeah. Well, let me go for one. You who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Verse two says, say this, yeah. God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. So a refuge really is a strong tower. Mm -hmm. It's a structure that protects you from enemies. 
it protects, especially in the Old Testament, it, it protected people from storms or from evil forces. And one thing about a refuge is that it was pretty much higher than all of the rest of the buildings. In fact, the Bible says that those who are saved can run to the refuge or run to the tower and be safe. That's right. And so we have to understand and we have to declare that God is my fortress. Somebody say that with me. Say God. God is, is my my fortress. Fortress. And that leads us back into Psalm number uh, 91, stanza number two, mm -hmm. uh, where it says that God is my refuge. Why don't you repeat that after me? Say God. God is, is my refuge. My refuge. Now, a refuge is a strong tower. Mm -hmm. And in biblical times, it was a it was a castle and it was actually made up of solid rock. And it was a building that was higher than any other buildings. And what they understood and what the psalmist is talking about is that when things are coming against you, you can actually run to the place of refuge. Mm -hmm. You can run to a place that's higher than anything else, and that is the place where you will feel safe. Mm -hmm. That is the place where you will feel secure. Why? Because that's who God is. God is your refuge. So as you abide, as you remain, God now becomes a safe place for mm -hmm. you. A fortress. A fortress. In mm -hmm. fact, that is actually the next one. So why don't you repeat this after me? Say God. God. Is. Is. My. My. Fortress. Fortress. Very interesting um, definition here because it says a place that you can lie alongside. Hmm. It, it actually made me think about when a, a mother and a mother bird has a nest. Mm -hmm. And that nest is a place where that baby can feel safe, secure, a place where no harm or no hurt or no danger. Why? Because that baby bird is right next to that mama bird right there. <laughs> I thought I'd just drop some love tokens in the bank right there. Now that was a surprise. <laughs> uh, why don't you repeat that? Repeat this one after me. Say, God... God, I lost her right there. She just caught up. I got yeah, to <laughs> say, God, God, I trust you. I trust you. When you talk about trusting God, you're talking about being in a place of total security mm -hmm. and total strength. Now we're going to close here. Why don't you look at second Corinthians chapter 12, verse number nine, talking about trusting in God and mm -hmm. God being your place of strength and being your place of security. Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9, just to kind of give you some uh, background information, uh, the Apostle Paul had revelation from God, and the Apostle Paul was being used by God to minister these revelations to the churches so that the churches can have an understanding of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and was. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Paul understood that he was being attacked. And the Bible says that it was a messenger of Satan that was sent to buffet him. And so Paul went to the Lord and he went to the Lord, not necessarily complaining, but he was asking the Lord, Lord, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And then the Lord's response to Paul was this. And he said in verse number nine, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Then he told Paul that not only is the grace of God sufficient for him, he says that his strength, not Paul's own strength, he says that his strength is made perfect in areas where he's weak at. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> he then says, yeah. most gladly, Paul, the revelation kicked in. Paul says, most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my weaknesses mm -hmm that the power of Christ may come upon me. Mm -hmm. So Paul recognized that in order for him to do what God called him to do, in order to strengthen the churches, start the churches, have a word for people, he recognized and realized that in his own ability, he couldn't do it. He had to depend upon the grace of God the strength of God, mm -hmm. the glory of God, 
the wisdom of God and the power of God. And in fact, Paul says something in verse 10. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in my weaknesses mm -hmm. and my reproaches and my necessities and my persecutions in my distress. But here's the key. He says, for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. Paul realized that the situations, the tests and the trials that he was experiencing it was not for him. It was because he was a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul makes this statement. He says, when he is weak, hmm. he says, then I am strong. Notice Paul's declaration. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I am strong because of the grace of God, because of the power of God, because of the anointing of God, because of the wisdom of God that rests upon my life. And even pastor said this, and it, it stuck out to me when he was saying it, and because of his dependence on God. Yeah. That was a choice right there. So we want to encourage you this week, don't trust in your own abilities. Yeah. Don't trust in your own resources. Don't trust in your own wisdom. Mm -hmm. Don't even trust in your own strength. In fact, you got to act on Psalm number 91, especially stanza number two. And you've got to start saying what thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when you say what thus says the Lord, you will have what thus says the <laughs> Lord you're supposed to have. Yay. Yay so man. look, just because we're only, we've only covered Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2. Next week we'll continue on in the verses. We want to encourage you, go read the whole Psalm yourself so that when we get together, it's like you're getting that revelation as well too. And the Lord is actually enlightening the scriptures to you even more so once we kind of come together to dive a little bit further into these scriptures. Amen. Let's go ahead and lift up our hands today and let's just thank God for his word. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truths that are found in your word. We thank you for the wisdom that you provided us through your word. We thank you for the life that you provided us through your word, that your life, Father God, is everything that we need because it is rooted and grounded in the word of God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if you're out there today and you've never made this confession of faith, meaning you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, Master, and Savior. Hey, listen, if I wasn't saved, you know what I would do? You would go get I saved. I would go ahead and get saved. <laughs> so this is your opportunity today. If you're out there and you say, you know what? I'm not sure that I'm saved. The Bible says these things are written so that you know that you have eternal life. Eternal life does not start when you leave this body. Eternal life starts the moment that you say, Jesus is Lord over my life. Mm -hmm. That's when you start learning how to live the God kind of life, the agape kind of life. You might say, Pastor, yes, I'm saved. I'm sure that I'm saved, but I'm out there and I'm not living the way I'm supposed to live. Well, the Bible simply says that you're just it's simply out of fellowship with God. Well, we can get you back into right standing, back into right fellowship with God. So if you're out there, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And wherever you're at, whether you're still in the bed, whether you're at your dining room table or living room table, you'll be saved right there on the spot. You'll experience God like you've never experienced him before. So go ahead and close your eyes and bow your head and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I believe with my heart. I believe with my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And save me now. And save me now. I turn from sin. I turn from sin. And now I turn towards you. And now I turn towards and you. And because of that. And because of that. I am. I am. Born again. Born again. And now. And now. I'm in right standing. I'm in right standing. With you. With you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 If you just prayed that prayer, please go over to the lifecenterchurch.org and click on the link that says receive Jesus. There is a card that we want to fill, want you to fill out. Uh, it'll 
it'll give us a little bit more information about you and the decision that you made today and then it'll allow us to send you something uh, to help encourage you and to help set you up for success based on the decision that you made today for Jesus. So pop on over at thelifecenterchurch.org. Congratulations. We are celebrating with you and actually all the angels in heaven are celebrating as well too based on the decision that you made for Jesus today. She said angels. She was about to get me started again because I've been studying about these angels. You should teach on that. You should teach that. That's part of Psalm number 91. So we're going to talk about these angels. Then you need to tune in. (laughs) It's going to be good. Well, before we leave, I have some good news for you. It is time to receive the offer. Time to give. So there are three different ways that you could give to the Life Center Church. You want to tell them the three different ways? Yes, you can actually uh, text to give. The number is actually listed below on your screen. Uh, you can also go to uh, the lifecenterchurch.org and click on give. Uh, you can actually give online through our online platform, a secure platform at that. Or you can actually mail your donation, your gift, your tithe, your offering into 1179 Central Street in Stoughton, Massachusetts. It's 02072, and the address should be listed on the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, Your generosity has allowed us to be a blessing to uh, a ton of families here uh, in the New England area, especially uh, with what's been going on lately in the COVID-19 pandemic. this whole season. So uh, if it's on your heart, uh, your generosity is appreciated and we're actually using those resources to be a blessing to other families. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have or would experience everlasting life. God is the greatest giver of all time. And as children of God, The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 that we should be imitators of God. Mm -hmm. We don't give just because we're trying to get something from God. We give because we have the heart of God because God's heart was that he loved so that he gives. And God is still receiving a harvest from the best seed that he's sown. And that seed that he's sown to all of us is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to show you from that principle that if you give with the right heart, God will make sure that you always, every single time, in every situation, will always have it to give. I like to say it this way, that you will keep the cycle of blessing going when you constantly have a heart to give because your heart is the same as God's. Well, I trust that you've done what the Lord has placed in your heart to do. So why don't you go ahead and lift up your tithe or your offering to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's take a moment to worship the Father with our giving today. Father, what an honor and a privilege it is that we can sow seed into the good ground of the Life Center Church, knowing, Father, that more men, women, boys and girls will not only have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord, their Master, and their Savior, but they would also come into the knowledge of the truth. Ministers and angels, we command you and charge you to go forth, harvest our return, for we have need of it for the kingdom's sake, as well as for our own. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One thing that I do want to add in regards to your generosity, um, we have partnered together with Teen Challenge. For some of you all who don't know what Teen Challenge is, it is actually uh, a program where people that have uh, been, uh, that had a dependency on alcohol, heroin, uh, drug addiction, they actually go there to uh, recover. And so even especially uh, some of our teen, our COVID-19 efforts has actually been uh, donating certain, um, what do you call it, hygiene products to them as well too so this upcoming thursday we're actually doing another job we actually do jobs every month once a month uh once a month uh to make sure that the men that are there uh, in the house although uh you know so that they still have the supplies that they need uh while they are actually going through the recovery process and not have to worry about not having enough supplies uh as a result of what's going on with COVID-19 and different shortages so this Thursday we're actually doing another drop uh if you want to uh donate to that you can actually donate and just uh detail in the donation you know it's for Teen Challenge or either so some of you all have our phone number text and say hey I donated it was for Teen Challenge, or a uh, pastor is going to be in the parking lot uh, at the synagogue, masked up, gloved up with a <laughs> hazmat suit on uh, <laughs> at two o'clock uh, on this Thursday at 1179 Central Street. So if you wanted to bring it up there, uh, you can because they're actually coming to pick up at 2.30. Just make sure uh, that you are you present the same safety to us as we would present to you though. So come and wear your mask. 
And if you have to wear your glove, cover yourselves up, whatever, and then uh, we'll make sure that those uh, families actually get the resources that they need. And that's how we're being a blessing this um, season. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you finish the rest of the announcements? Wednesday the, and Yes! <laughs> okay. So on Wednesday, uh, join us uh, via Zoom, live via Zoom. We actually have somewhat of a mini Bible study uh, on Wednesday. Lately, we've just been kind of like chatting out some things that have actually been on our heart and talking about end time events. And so it's actually been really good. So log on to uh, our Zoom. I guess we should put that number as well. It'll, too. Be, we'll, it'll be on the bottom yeah. of the screen as well, too, so that you can actually join us live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We actually have a prayer call yep. and it was actually phenomenal this morning. Pastor actually leads the prayer call and he was talking about um, just kind of the state of New England. Uh, it was really good. Well, though, not so. just New England, the entire East Coast. The entire Coast. East Coast. So it and had like some ironclad statistics in, uh, concerning the state of Christianity in New England. So we were able to join our faith together to begin to pray out God's heart and God's will for his people on this Eastern Seaboard. It was pretty phenomenal this morning, I must say. So and I'm not saying that just because he's my husband. I was uh, getting some stuff out of it as well, too. 9 a.m., phone number, access code at the bottom of the screen every Saturday at 9 a.m. And then back again, 11 a.m. next Sunday. Sunday. Did I forget anything? Nope, I feel like I, I forgot something. So we do three mm -hmm. things here at that's the Life it. Center Church. So yes. we encourage you to live, live for God, God, love family, and serve people. people. Have and a blessed week. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Love you. Love Miss you, you all.